Blessed one said this, bhikkhus, bhikkhus means monk. So you have to understand bhikkhus because whenever I uh, talk, I usually use the Pali word. The bhikkhu means monk, Buddhist monk. Okay? Form is impermanent. Form means, this is called the form. Rupa, called Pali. Form is impermanent. Is it permanent? Is it permanent? Our body form, form is impermanent. You see, when we was a uh, baby, and our form was <coughs> one kind, right? And when you grow up and change, and then when you become old, change. So our form is changeable. All the time changes, right? That's why the Blessed One said to the monks, form is impermanent. So especially the practitioner, they think about our body. This body is not permanent. It's impermanent. And he said, feeling is impermanent. There are three kinds of feeling. Pleasant feeling, painful feeling and neutral feeling. So those three kinds of feeling not permanent, impermanent, right? Mm -hmm. So when present feeling arises, then after 30 minutes or one hour, painful feeling arises, right? Even though I don't want it, but it's still arising, right? And then when we practice one hour, two hours, sometimes we feel neutral feeling arise. Right? So, so there are three kinds of feeling. You have to remember that. So, pleasant feeling, painful feeling, and neutral feeling. Okay? That's why Blessed One said, the feeling is impermanent. I want always pleasant feeling. Can you keep that? No, it will change all the time, all the time. That's why he said, feeling is impermanent. And then, perception is impermanent. Perception. When painful feeling arises, the perception means it, it gives the name. This is pleasant feeling. This is painful feeling. This is neutral feeling. Who is giving name? Perception. Perception is giving the name. Okay? So, perception is impermanent. And then, formation is impermanent. So, we create the karma. Karma means action. Through the bodily action, verbally action, and mentally action. Bodily, we do three kinds of action. We kill living beings. This is bodily action. Right? If you don't move your hand, your body, 
So you don't keep. So body we create three action. Bodily, we kill living beings and we take what is not given and then we commit adultery. These three kinds of action we do bodily. Okay? And verbally. We create four kinds of action. We lie, tell a lie, lying with others, and then surrendering and speak uh, harsh speech and then gossip, vain talk. So these four kinds of unwholesome things we do. So that's why he said should not commit unwholesome action. Should not do unwholesome action. And mentally, three. Greed rise in our mind. Hatred rise in our mind. And then wrong view. Wrong views. So how many? Three. So bodily three, mentally four, Ah, oh, sorry, bodily three, verbally four, and mentally three. All to the how many? Ten. So ten unwholesome things we commit. So if we free from the ten unwholesome things, that means we are doing wholesome activities. Abstention from killing living beings, abstention from taking what is not given, abstention from sexual misconduct, and abstention from lying, abstention from slandering, abstention from harsh speech, and abstention from gossip, and abstention from greed, abstention from hatred, and abstention from wrongdoing. All to the ten. That those are all wholesome, just opposite. Okay? So, formation, he said, formation are impermanent. You know, people come to us, Bhante, please give us the precept. The, especially lay people observe the five precept. So, what are the five precept? Abstention from killing. Abstention from taking what is not given, and abstention from sexual misconduct, and abstention from lying, and abstention from taking alcohol. You cannot drink alcohol. <laughs> so these five precept, lay people, especially practitioner, they keep the five precept all the time when they practice meditation. Because they don't feel guilty. I, my mind is pure now. You see? So here, that's why in the formation are impermanent. And then consciousness is impermanent. Consciousness. We call him Kali Vinya. Consciousness is impermanent. Then he said, seeing thus, because. Again, what does it mean, because? Mum, right? Because means mum, Buddhist mum. Because the instructed noble disciple experiences revulsion towards form, revulsion towards feeling, revulsion towards perception, and revulsion towards formation, revulsion towards consciousness. Experiencing revulsion, he becomes dispassionate. Through this passion, his mind is liberated. When it is liberated, there comes the knowledge. It is liberated, he understands. Despite its birth, the holy life has been lived. What had to be done has been done. There is no more for this state of being. That means you attain Nibbana. So when you understand these three, four, these five are called five aggregates. 
So when you understand the five aggregates and you all the time do the wholesome activities, all the time for the wholesome activities, you develop your mindfulness. What does it mean mindfulness? What is the definition of mindfulness? I think last time I, I said right here, remember to observe how mind's attention moves from one thing to another. This is the definition of mindfulness. Okay, so your mindfulness will be very clear, very sharp. Because you are cultivating wholesome things all the time. So that's why these are called impermanent, anicca. Right? So, then he said, form is suffering. So when everything is, this form is changing, or that, is, that is suffering. Right? Because I want to keep it, but it still cannot keep changing, changing, changing. Right? This is suffering. That's why he said here, form is suffering, feeling is suffering, perception is su suffering, formation is suffering, and consciousness is suffering. Seeing thus, he understands there is no more for this state of being. So now you got two, impermanent and suffering. The last one, non-self. We can call that impersonal, non-self. This is my body. This is my car. You see? We, this is my house. But when you practice meditation, when you attend the first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana, the base of in, infinite space, the base of infinite consciousness, then you will understand how the thousand consciousness rising and passing away, rising and passing away, rising and passing away. You will experience, then you will see everything is impermanent. There is no, nothing self, non-self. You will understand that time. But if you don't practice, you will never understand. True meditation, when you understanding, your understanding will go from first jhana to the up to deeper level. Then you'll experience there is nothing self. You see, so that's why people when the people attain the stream mantra. And they can experience the first one, Sakkhaya Ditti, non-self. They can understand that. But you also can experience, don't worry, okay? So these are the three core, three, three characteristics. Impermanent, suffering, and non-self. I repeat again, impermanent, we call it Pali Anicca, suffering, dukkha, non-self, anatta. Anicca, dukkha, anatta. So you also sometimes have to learn Pali, right? <laughs> because I know Bhante Suddha so also use the Pali sometimes, right? So Anicca means impermanent. Suffering, dukkha, non-self, anatta. So when you practice meditation and you attain you 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 attain the highest stage, then you will experience everything is impermanent, changing, changing, changing. And what is changing? There is suffering. And there is no I, no mind. No me. You understand that. So when you understand that, then you attain all the jhanas. What does it mean jhana? I think I, when I came here last time I explained. Jhana means stage of meditation. 
Jhana means stage of meditation. First jhana or level of understanding. When you attain the first jhana, the first stage of meditation. So how will you understand that you attain the first jhana? There are five kinds of the characteristic, the five things. Thinking and examining thought. Thinking thought and examining thought. Joy, happiness and unification of mind. How many? Five. I repeat again. Because I want you to all of you to understand just whatever I am saying here to be clear all of you. And then when you practice 30 minutes, then you can experience. Okay? This teaching is immediately affected. The Blessed One said, My Dhamma is immediately affected. If you practice now, you will experience right now. If you practice properly. So, if you don't understand, then you just close your eyes and then you don't know what you are what you were doing. Just wasting time. You know? So to understand jhana, first jhana, thinking thought, examining thought, joy, happiness, and unification of mind. When thinking and examining thought, joy happiness and unification of mind arise in your mind. Five hindrances absent, then you attain the first jhana. Is it possible to attain the first jhana? Is it possible? Of course, everybody can attain that. One day I went to Bhante Suddhasu Center, far, far away for teaching meditation. One lady came to me, asked me that, Bhante, is it possible to attain the jhana for the many people? And I told her, yes, why not? If you practice, you can attain right now. But it's depend on the people. Some people take one week, some people take two days, three days, and they can attain first jhana. So before that, you have to understand the five hindrances. So what are the five hindrances? Can anybody answer? Five hindrances? Do you know? What are the five hindrances? Please. Sensual desire. Yes. Ill will. Um, <laughs> no, I'm sleepiness and sleepiness, dullness. Restlessness, remorse, and doubt. Doubt, yeah. So you have to understand. First, what are the five hindrances? Because if you don't understand five hindrances, then you will not understand you you attain the first jhana or not. Because first you have to understand five hindrances, sensual desire, uh, aversion, sleepiness and dullness, and restlessness and anxiety, and doubt. This is the five hindrances. And another one, you have to understand right effort or harmonious practice. Recognize, release, relax, tension and tightness, and then bring up the wholesome thought by smiling. Keep a smile. And keep the wholesome thought as long as you can. This is the right thing. So whenever anyone, any hindrances arise in your mind, you just recognize it and release it. Don't pay attention there continuously because this is unwholesome. Right? And relax tension and tightness. Here, relax is very important. Because if you don't take relax as that, you may get heavy. Do you know? Long time ago, when I was in Burma, I went to practice meditation at uh, one meditation center. Nobody help me to take a relaxed step, you know? 
so we practice one hour sitting and one hour walking meditation that's it when you practice the sitting meditation don't move don't back and forth okay that's fine then said practice sitting meditation so i try to practice seriously you know because i want to attain something and i close my eyes and practice and after one hour i get huge headache you know because i didn't take the last step so here you have to take the last step very important tension and tightness this is one sort of craving so when you take relax a step then you feel your mind is pure your mind is clear and your mind is agile then you feel relax not only in your head but also whole body take the relax a step whole body okay and breathe up the whole some thought as smile the more you smile more for some thought would arise in your mind you know smiling in your brain smiling corner of your eyes smiling on your lips and a smile on your heart this is called a smile so keep a smiling as much as possible then you will understand your mind is clear pure You see, you will understand, not me, because you are practitioner, right? And keep the wholesome thought as long as possible. So when sensual desire arises, recognize, release, relax, tension and tightness, and then bring up the wholesome thought by smiling, keep the wholesome thought as long as you can. And when aversion arises, recognize it, release it, relax, tension and tightness, and Bring up the whole samta by smiling. Keep the whole samta continuously. When sleepiness and dullness, you know, some people just practice five minutes and then they feel sleepy. You see, they don't know. Sometimes they think they're there at home, <laughs> 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 right? So you have to recognize it, release, relax, tension and tightness, and then bring up the whole samta continuously, and then keep the whole samta as long as you can. And Restlessness and anxiety arise, and you can recognize, release, relax, tension and tightness, and bring up the whole samsara by smiling, and keep the whole samsara continuously. Mm-hmm. The last one, doubt arise. You again, recognize, release, relax, tension and tightness here in your head, and then bring up the whole samsara continuously, and keep the whole, whole samsara as much as long as you can. So this is the key. Okay. Mm-hmm. So if you know five hindrances and the right effort, then this practice is easy for you. You understand? When you attain the first jhana, no five hindrances there. In your mind, thinking and examining thought, joy, happiness, and unification of mind arise. You attain the first jhana. Is it? Does it make sense? Mm-hmm. Is it clear? Mm-hmm. Five hindrances is not there. Oh, in your mind, thinking and examining thought arise, joy arise, happiness arise, unification of mind arise. You understand? It arises very quickly. Mm-hmm. It arises very quickly. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you understand, and you think that. Five hindrances. What are the five hindrances? When you understand five hindrances, five hindrances is not not there. So thinking and examining thought, joy, happiness, unification of mind there. You attain the first jhana, right? No need to come to me. No need to come go to Bhante Sudarsu and ask Bhante, do I attain first jhana or second jhana? No need to ask. You know, <laughs> you can understand yourself, right? and then when you are when you keep practicing meditation then you see thinking and examining thought stop arising only joy 
happiness and unification of mind rise. Five hindrances absent. Then you attain second job. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. Again, you are practicing continuously, practicing, practicing. Then joy stops rising. Only happiness and unification of mind arise. Then you attain third job. That time to five hindrances after. Five hindrances is not there. But whenever five hindrances, anyone arise in your mind, then you drop from the jump. You are no more on jump. Then what do you have to do? Again, you have to radiate loving kindness to yourself ten minutes. I will explain how to practice loving kindness later on. Then you radiate loving kindness to yourself ten minutes and to your spiritual friend twenty minutes. Okay? Then again in the third jump. Right? Mm -hmm. And then what is the difference between joy and happiness? Can anybody answer? What is the difference between joy and happiness? Some people say that joy and happiness are almost the same. Mm -hmm. Joy means excite, excitement or delighting. And happiness means you feel so comfortable during the trip. Like you are on the ocean. Like you are on the, on the sky. You don't feel that you have body here. You don't feel that. This is happiness. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Right? Joy means excitement and delighting. And happiness means you feel comfortable. You feel light. You are like the ocean. You are like Florida. Okay? This is happiness. And when happiness, so you again practicing, practicing, then eventually happiness has stopped rising. Only unification of mind. So what what does mean unification of mind? This is the question, right? What does it mean? In you mind into one. You mind into one. One place. Not two. This is called unification of mind. Okay? Then you see when happiness is stop rising, then you feel from here to come to the top of your head. You don't feel here anymore. You feel your feeling to come to the top of your head, then that time you let in the fourth jhana. So how can how do you practice loving kindness meditation? Mm -hmm. Now you understand first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, and fourth jhana, right? Mm -hmm. So so how do you practice loving kindness meditation? Remember a time when you were happy. For instance, you talk with your girlfriend, with your best friend. You smile with her. Then, happy feeling. Try to bring at the center of your chest. When you feel warm and glowing feeling in the center of your chest, you make a wish. Then, you radiate loving kindness to yourself. May I be happy. May I be calm. May I be peaceful. May I be content. And so, <coughs> whatever you want to make a wish, only 10 minutes. You radiate loving kindness to yourself, only 10 minutes. Okay? Mm -hmm. And after 10 minutes, you choose a spiritual friend. Those who are women, choose only one woman. And those who are men, just choose only one man. As a spiritual friend. Okay? Who really respect you, who really love you, choose only one. 
as a spiritual friend. Then try to visualize his smile or her smile, the center of your chest. When you feel warm and glowing feeling, then again you start radiating loving kindness to him or to her. May my friend be happy. May my friend be calm. May my friend be peaceful. May my friend be full of joy. May my friend be content and so on. You understand that how you are radiating loving kindness to your spiritual friend. You understand, you, you experience that. To mm -hmm. go, to radiate very slowly. Don't practice too fast, okay? You have to practice naturally, right? So whenever any hindrances arise, just use the harmonious practice right away. So that way, you can attain the jhana. First jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana. And after fourth jhana, I didn't want to explain today because you have to attend the first jhana first. <laughs> <laughs> so if I explain more, you may be confused, you know. <laughs> so even though I explained up to first jhana, second jhana, third, third jhana, fourth jhana, still, <laughs> I think you, are, you don't understand, right? Mm -hmm. But anyway. You will understand the step by step. Okay? Mm -hmm. It will come to you. Right? What time is it now? I think. So, Dhammat uh, for today, up to, up to this, and then I think uh, you have to sit right now because we'll practice for 30 minutes. So, sit, please uh, sit down, straight your body, and not back. Don't back and forth, okay? Don't move your posture. Sit nicely and then 